welcome to a new episode of Photography Behind the Scenes. Today I'm taking you with me to shoot some film in the fog. This was earlier this year and maybe the last foggy day I got this season. Now with spring coming up here in Austria I assume that the next foggy session is going to be in autumn. Anyway, on this day I had come out to the countryside here in the early morning before sunrise equipped with my Pentax K1000 and a roll of Fuji Pro 400H. I started at this parking area that is next to a tiny countryside train station which I thought would be a great subject to start off with. I set up the camera here to get a wide shot of the train station. I was especially fond of the red light. Here is the first shot of the day. I like it, but there's definitely a lot of space for improvement. Things I'm enjoying here are the red light, which resulted in this nice striking point of interest, the atmosphere from the fog of course, and the subject in general. I think the train station is so unique because it's so rural and minimal, it's reduced to the bare minimum of what a train station needs, which in this case I find somehow cute. Something I find worth pointing out is that the photo lacks any people, which at first might sound like a negative because it'd be cool to have a person standing at the train station, but on the other hand, I think it's actually great that nobody's in the photo because that allows the train station itself to take all the focus and present itself as a character in the photograph. Next, I was looking for a way to photograph the traffic light and its beautiful red. Here's the result. Again, I enjoy the atmosphere captured in this photo, and also the red light looks great. Something I unfortunately missed while composing is that sign that is peeking into the photo on the right. As far as I know, most film camera viewfinders don't cover the entire frame, so the edges are always an estimation. In this case, I seem to have either done a bad estimation or I just forgot about this, which does happen to me a lot. Apart from that, I like that the path bridges the foreground and the forest in the background. If you look carefully, you can see that the road leads into the forest, leading to who knows where. Next, I came here hoping to find a composition of the bridge. Here's the shot, and I really like this one. It has a lot of depth thanks to the fog of course, which slowly fades everything that is in the distance, but also the train tracks that act like a leading line showing us the way through the photo. It also divides the photograph in the left side with the field and the right side being the forest. As you can see, I ended up not really featuring the bridge strongly in the composition. It's in the corner as a sort of starting point for the journey of the train tracks, and additionally the bottom area here simply adds some diversity to the photograph. What I appreciate here, as I often do, are the details. While in the distance, the photograph mostly shows natural elements such as the forest, in the foreground we get a closer look at the textures of the bridge, including the small bricks, which I find especially pleasing somehow. As I was walking towards the field, a train arrived at the station. As you can see, it was still rather dark and the inside of the train was brighter than the surrounding environment, which I think has such an intriguing look which I'd love to shoot. In this particular case, however, I was unfortunately too unprepared for the situation, so I didn't shoot it. After that, I continued to walk towards the field to my right because I was aiming to photograph the car that was parked in the middle of it. Two, three. I hope that works out. <laughs> so here is the three second exposure. As I was shooting this, I wasn't so pleased about the fact that there were so many cars passing by in the background, but they didn't get less, so after waiting some time, I shot it like this anyway. But now, I have to say, I actually really like the light trail at the back. 
It adds something pretty unique to the photo because in combination with the fog it looks so mysterious. Apart from that, I enjoy the main character here, the car. I think it fits quite nicely into the environment. I'm not so sure however about the houses, the one on the side in the foreground and the one behind the road. Although I do like the bright orange light that it's emitting. So overall, not a bad photo, but I don't exactly know what to think of it. Oh, now there's no car, seriously? Okay, I'll try it once more. Now we wait. Here is the result, this time without cars and I think it's beautiful. While I did like the effect of the cars creating the light trail at the back, this version feels so calm and quiet. It's a calm misty morning here, you look out of your window and you see that your neighbour seems to have had someone visit overnight because that car is parked next to their house. The other neighbour also just got up and you can see that warm light coming from the bedroom. Awesome story along those lines. And that's the kind of feeling I get when looking at this. I think it's a great outcome. This is like a road into nothingness. Here is the road into nothingness. Again, I find this photograph quite calming, however not in the homey context like in the last one. Interestingly, many have commented before mentioning the dystopian vibe of my photography, which I was not surprised about, but I was slightly confused. When I think of dystopian photography, I do not feel calmness, whereas my photography mostly represents a feeling of something quiet and tranquil, so I wasn't sure what to think of this dystopian perception. But of course, this is photography after all, which is free to be interpreted entirely subjectively in whatever way the viewer is pulled to. I just found it interesting that a number of people had pretty different feelings about these photos than me. In this particular case, the road into nothingness, I kind of get the dystopian angle, but still, I find the emphasis on the calmness stronger. So now the question is, do I continue into nothingness? That doesn't look like there might be much to shoot. Or do I go back and over there to the road? <laughs> While thinking about that, I found a possible composition of the shed and the tracks in the distance. Here is the photo, and I think I like it. I enjoy the variety of elements here, we've got the field, the road and the train tracks, then the shed which seems to be a point of focus and the trees to the right. Something I find super random in not a good way is that FedEx truck. It just doesn't fit in here at all but I got the shot anyway because apart from that the scene is actually pretty cool. A small detail worth pointing out in my opinion is the red light from the train tracks. It gives this photograph a sense of life and anticipation I find because the red light signals that this place is active and that possibly a train is going to come sometime soon. Ooh, the train I think is coming, that could be interesting. Oh shit, but it's fast. <laughs> oh god. A 
a bit of a gamble, but uh, I just took the settings I just had on the previous photo, so it should be fine. I was expecting it to take a stop at the train station, therefore I was so unprepared. <laughs> so the composition is not perfect, but uh, I think it could look quite cool. Luckily, the gamble worked out fine. The exposure is looking good. Now, first off, I'm falling in love with the train as a subject. This, of course, depends on the train. In this case, this is an older type of train that travels through these rural parts of Austria, and the aesthetic of older trains is quite my taste. I believe I would enjoy this photograph much less if the train were some modern high-tech style train. I think the environment and the old train fit together beautifully, and it reminds me of peaceful scenes in a film, such as the famous train scene in Spirited Away. It's this combination of a quiet natural surrounding and the train bringing its passengers through the area, which for some reason evokes such romantic feelings in me. It seems a bit irrational to me when I think about it, but photography isn't rational, at least in my opinion. Anyway, I was now hoping for more trains to come to get some more shots of this type, but before I show you that, I want to take a minute to give a warm welcome to a new sponsor on the channel. Artlist. In case you've somehow missed what Artlist is, it's a huge online library for royalty-free music for people like me to use. The music you hear in my videos is from Artlist. The music you can get is, in my honest opinion, of a long and intense listener and appreciator of music, high quality, in not only a technical sense, but more importantly in a creative sense. Just recently, Artlist added a new personal plan, which is a cheaper subscription for users like me who only use the music for their personal social channels. If you work commercially, you can get their full subscription, which covers everything. Regardless of the plan you choose, once you download a song or sound effects with an active subscription and a publisher video, the music in that video is safe, even if you cancel your subscription at a later time. You can get the unlimited plan for $16.60 per month or the personal plan for only $9.99 a month, and of course, I've got a referral link in the description which will give you two extra months for free and also support me. So if you need music for your videos, I would highly appreciate it if you would use my link. Big thank you to Artlist for sponsoring me. Well then, let's continue. So now I was looking for a possible composition of the train tracks leading through the area here. Next train is coming. Gotta be quick. Okay, here we go. Come on. All right, I think that one might have been quite cool. Maybe. <laughs> Here's the shot, and yes, I think this turned out really cool. I don't need to repeat why I enjoy the subject matter, it's exactly the same as in the previous photograph. Something I noticed here, which simply makes the composition work so well in my eyes, is the balance between the forest and the train. Without the train, I think the left side of the photo would feel a bit empty and lacking some weight. So the train is the perfect addition to the composition. I'm really happy with this outcome. By the way, in case you're wondering, I consciously chose a rather slow shot speed to blur the train a bit, because I would find it a pity to freeze the movement that it adds to the otherwise so still photograph. Then I walked along the train tracks, still in search of a composition of the scene without the train. Not knowing at the time, of course, how much I was going to love the addition of the train. Okay. Yeah, we go. Here's the shot. So it's not at all bad, but it is lacking something. Also, something that is left out here, which I appreciated in the previous photos, is the forest to the right. This photo is clearly split in the field at the bottom and the fog in the upper half. The middle line is straight, whereas in the previous photograph it got interrupted by the forest, which made it more interesting, I find. Then, I eventually found this road here and decided to try another road composition. Woohoo! 
this is it. Similar to the last photo, the composition is split in the middle, however, the line is interrupted by the power pole, which I appreciate. Apart from that, I overall like the photograph, but I would love to try this with a timer so that I can run into frame myself. I actually have a Zenit E camera which has a built-in analog timer, however, I don't fully trust it yet, so I hadn't brought it for this session. Alright, I don't really know where I want to continue. Actually, on this side it looks like the fog is slowly disappearing. This side still looks quite foggy, but it just came from there. <laughs> well, I think then I'll start walking back and maybe I'll find something on the way. Let's go back this way. Looks... <gasps> Oh wait, there's another train coming. Maybe I can get another train shot of some sort. Uh, the question is how though. Oh, I gotta be fast. So how about we do this at F4. Got it. Let's just do it again. Come on. I uh, kind of liked it when it was closer, but um, yeah, I wasn't turning around fast enough. Anyway, this has become sort of a train session, I suppose. So here's the first shot. I like it a lot for the reasons mentioned in the previous train photos, however one thing that didn't work here is the balance with the forest. In this photograph the forest and the train are together, leaving the right side in the photo empty, which creates an imbalance. This is the second shot and I like it. It's similar to the photograph I got of the train tracks without a train, but this time with a train. And while at first I wasn't so fond of the distance, I now think it isn't too bad actually. It seems to work as a counterweight to the train tracks on the right side, adding some balance to the photograph. Overall, it feels a bit too wide though. I think this one would look great if I had shot it with a 50mm lens. So I was walking back towards the parking area where I had started, and as I was almost back at the beginning, I spotted a possible composition of the train tracks again. Here's what I got, it's a photograph focusing more on the features of the train tracks, specifically the power pole and the light. I think it's an okay photo, but it doesn't evoke anything in particular in me. So then I got back to where I started, and I looked around if there's anything else to shoot. But it was at this time that I had a moment of contemplation. I was feeling really cold, and I had gotten some hopefully good shots of the trains, so I thought it's fair to head home now and warm up, and so I did, and that was the end of this session. I think this was a wonderful excursion on a foggy morning. It was freezing, but worth it, mainly for the train photographs in my opinion. I think I should try to get some more photos of the trains in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, I'd appreciate a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.